Hello designers, I'm Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into the video. In this video, I want to show you how you can add custom breakpoints to your website. But first, let's understand what are breakpoints. So when the width of your browser or the device that you're using reaches this value, which in my case is 768 pixels, the layout is triggered and the tablet view is displayed to the user. So that can happen when I resize my browser window or when the device the user using has a width of this. And the same applies to the mobile view. So when the user previews my website at 360 pixels wide mobile device or when the browser is scaled to 360 pixels, then the mobile view that I specify for my template is triggered and of course you can change this in settings you can go to elementor and under settings and style you can change your default breakpoints for tablet and mobile views so when the width reaches this particular value the tablet view is triggered and the width reaches this value mobile view will be triggered so here I have a section block with a heading widget so watch what happens as I resize my browser window and when I reduce the width of the browser window. So now the background color of this section is pink. So that's great. Watch what happens as it gradually decrease the width of a browser window. So when it reaches a specific value, my background is changed to a gradient, a red and a white one. And when I further scale it down, at some point it changes to red and green. And at some other width, the background is changed to red and yellow. And when it reaches the mobile view, you can see the background changes to red and gray gradient. So this is nothing but a custom breakpoint. So I basically set a lot of custom breakpoints for my template. And this is possible with a really powerful feature in CSS called CSS Media Queries. And I'm going to teach you that in this video. So what are media queries? Well, they specify the rules or the code that needs to be applied when the width of the device reaches a specific point. In other words, these are basically your custom breakpoints. So when the width reaches this value, whatever code that you specify in here will be triggered or whatever code that you specify in this particular condition will be applied. As you can see here, I have said that when my width reaches 900 pixels, apply this code. And for each width, I have separate background gradients. And that's how this particular thing changed. So you can watch it again. So it will have a different background gradient at different breakpoints. And not just background gradient or background image, you can basically apply any CSS property at these custom breakpoints. That's really the power of CSS media queries. So how do you do it? It's simple. Before you even type any code or any custom CSS, you need to add this custom breakpoint rule or media query rule. So this is common at the rate media and screen and is also common. And the only value that you need to change is the width in pixels. So this will specify the code that needs to be applied when the width reaches this particular value. So you can have as many breakpoints. So you can specify different values and you can have different code for each value. So that's how you do custom breakpoints. As these are basically CSS breakpoints, you can change any property of any section, column or widget in your Elementor template. So you can change the background color, box shadow, width, height, you can even toggle the visibility so you can hide different elements at different breakpoints and there's a lot more. I'll just show you a few of the things that you can do with breakpoints. So first, I'll show you how different breakpoints can change the color of this text. So the code for that is simple. So you click on the element and you go to advanced, click on custom CSS. Don't worry if you're using the free version, I'll show you how to do it at the end of this video. So the pattern is simple, you can copy the code snippet from the description. First, you need to specify this rule. 
so at the rate media screen and is common max width is also common and then you specify the value or the breakpoint that you want so once you specify the breakpoint it's 800 pixels in my case i need to type the code that i want to apply so when i clicked on this as you all know you can type selector to change various properties of that particular element and i can change the color of this to blue so at 800 pixels the color of the selector or in this case the heading widget will be blue let me copy and paste this for different breakpoints i'll just change the values so the as i said the pattern is simple you just need to change the code in within the selector so you can do all the stuff that i teach in here so let us change this value to 700 pixels and let's say we want to have a red color here and let's say we want to have a black color here and uh, finally second so preview the color changes of my text using this black background so what what happens when the breakpoint width changes the color gradually changes because those are the rules or the code that is specified here and that's what is being applied in here and of course you can click each element and specify a particular breakpoint for each element but it's always advisable to have this at one place so you can drag an html widget and add all the css and for each breakpoint you can specify various properties i'll show you how to do that in a bit using media queries or custom breakpoints you can also toggle the visibility of any element so you can click on this and you can also give the visibility to hidden so when the width reaches 600 pixels and below this particular heading widget will be invisible or it will not be shown let's test that out so watch what happens as i gradually reduce the media browser size and after this width the heading widget completely disappears that's because we have set the visibility at that particular breakpoint to hidden okay so let me toggle this to visible and so initially it will be visible and then it will be hidden then it will be visible again and finally when it reaches the mobile view it will be hidden so i'm basically toggling the visibility of the heading widget i'll update the code and even the preview gets updated so initially this heading widget is visible so i can see the text on it as it gradually scale through it's hidden shown again hidden hidden again so that's basically the code that we specified in here so at each point i specified either the visibility to be hidden or to be visible so you can toggle the visibility of any element it can, it need not be this particular heading widget it can be your section or your column in fact that's how elementor does this advanced responsive thing so you can hide it on desktop so it's basically internally doing the same thing but you can however use custom breakpoints to override those features and have them shown or hide on specific devices and here's a quick note before you apply any custom css make sure you clear out all the settings that you set using the style tab so that the custom css properties will properly be applied and recently i've taught css transitions and as i told you you can apply any css code in between these custom breakpoints you can also add different transitions for different breakpoints so when the breakpoint is at 900 pixels or when the width of the screen is 900 pixels you can have a different transition and when the width of the screen is 700 pixels or at 700 pixels custom breakpoint you can have a different transition or even a different animation i've taught transitions animations box shadows and a lot of stuff and i'll leave link to those playlists in the description so this is the code that we need to type for transition right 
So when I hover over it, it will change the color to blue. As I specified different transitions for different breakpoints, let me resize the window first. So now the color of the text is changed to white, meaning it has reached a breakpoint that we have specified in here. So when the width is at 900 pixels, we will change the color to white and we'll apply a transition which is basically changing the color to blue so let's see let's hover over it and you can see the color of the text changes to blue as I hover over it at 900 pixels and we've also said a different code or a different transition for 700 pixels so let's resize our browser window even further so that it reaches 700 pixels and now the text color is changed to pink, meaning we have reached another breakpoint. So let me hover over this and you can see the color of the text changes to red. So basically we specified different transition for 700 pixels and a different transition for 900 pixels. And of course you can specify any CSS code, literally any code that I taught so far. And if you know anything else, you can also type any code that you have so you can hide elements you can resize elements you can apply different animations at different breakpoints you can do a lot of stuff with breakpoints you can also have different font sizes at different breakpoints so at maybe at a bigger resolution or at a bigger width you can have a bigger font size and at a smaller resolution maybe on mobile devices you can have a relatively smaller font size so similar to max width, you can also have min width. It works in the opposite direction, meaning it triggers in the opposite way. So when the device size is at least 900 pixels, meaning 900 pixels and above, this will be the font size. And when the device size will be 700 pixels and above, this will be the font size. This is similar to max width, max width changes in the opposite direction meaning when you scale down and min width changes in a progressive direction meaning when you scale your browser up so that's how max width and min width works okay so how do you add custom breakpoints on free version of elementor well it's simple whatever code you have for pro version you can simply copy and paste that but before copying and pasting that the first step is to name the element that you're trying to add cu custom breakpoints to so you can call this element anything that you want it can it should be a unique name so once you name this element drag html widget anywhere on the page so you can drag it anywhere it doesn't matter so once you drag the html widget add to style tags or an opening and closing style tag to be precise and whatever code you have for the pro version or whatever code you have just copy and paste that so this is the code for custom breakpoints you can copy and click here and paste that in between these style tags and replace selector with dot and the name that you gave here so for this the name that I gave was any le so i can basically click on this remove custom css from here you can click on this and replace selector with dot any le and the same here so wherever i have selector i'll just replace it with dot followed by the name that we gave to that particular widget and by doing so you can apply all the custom breakpoint stuff to any section column or widget using the free version of Elementor as well. So you can add custom CSS in pro version on a per element basis. But what if you want to have all the code at one place? Well, the way to do that is also by using HTML widget. So it's similar to what you do on free version. So just name all the elements that you're applying custom CSS to with unique names. So if you're applying custom CSS to the section, just give it a unique name. 
so once you name them what is the code you have under this copy that and paste it under html widget and of course replace selector with dot followed by the name that you gave for that element so by doing so you'll have all the code for this custom breakpoint under one bracket and you'll have all the code for this custom breakpoint under another bracket so if you have code for this section you'll have selector and stuff so you copy and paste the same code and of course replace selector with dot followed by the name that you gave to this section in this case any le section so once you do that i highly recommend you use max width all the time whenever you want to set custom breakpoints but if you specify min width that will be from that breakpoint and above so usually it's max width don't get confused if you don't understand min width properly don't worry just use max width property and this will set your custom breakpoint so in here i have given my heading widget any le and my column widget any le section so the code i have here for 900 pixels breakpoint is that any le will have blue color text and background color will be red and at 700 pixels breakpoint i'll basically have any le color changed to white and any element section which is basically the the whole section to have a pink background that's what i've specified in here so we can test that out so let me resize my browser window as you can see when it reaches a particular breakpoint it changes its background color and color and i scale it further down it reaches another breakpoint and it applies all the code that i have within this particular bracket or within this particular thing so this is how you clean up your custom css code i'll be talking about cleaning up custom css code in an upcoming video because i've been teaching a lot of custom css and you may have actually applied custom css to each every each and every section column or widget i'll show you how to clean it up and have a better organized custom css so that you can easily change it and update anything that you want within few seconds and that's it for now and hope you guys liked it if you did you know the drill i'll talk to you in the next video and that's it for now and hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask i'm ready to help you catch you in the next video peace